Hey there, it's Shane Conley from the YouTube channel How to Wrench, and we just got done mounting up our Continental Connie Tour tires for our Harley Davidson here to uh, get ready for the season. And although it seems really simple to a lot of folks on setting tire pressure, we thought that we'd talk about a couple of real quick little tips and uh, tricks that we use to decide how much uh, pressure we're going to put in the motorcycle uh, with a couple of factors there. And then we're also going to talk about gauges. How do you know that your gauge is good? And then we're going to talk about a common place that can tend to be uh, a source of a leak or trouble. Uh, once you start messing around with them and air them up, we're going to show you how to inspect it. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure and subscribe to this channel and let's get to the lesson. If you want to make your tires last as long as possible and perform at their best, setting the proper tire pressure is going to be crucial. I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, it's riding season again and it's time to set those pressures. I can't stress enough that I recommend that you check them even in storage. If you let them sit for long periods of time without the proper pressure in there, it could create little flat spots in there. Most, most people won't notice that, but if you are wanting the premium performance out of that tire, it's a great idea to check it just like you go and maintain your batteries and so on. In the, in the ride in season, another thing to think about is not to just check the pressure at the, you know, at the beginning of that season and think you're done and good to go. I can't stress enough that's a good idea to check the tire pressure uh, just like a, a regular checkoff list before you ride. I know a lot of people give them a kick or whatnot. If you're hopping out to take off on a tour or long distance ride, I can't stress enough that you should check those pressures and then consider setting them accordingly to the, the weight, uh, the number of riders and so on like you find in your owner's manual. So that's how you're gonna make them last the longest and make them perform uh, as they're designed. All right, first things first. Let's talk about the gauges. It doesn't matter if you use an analog or if you use a, a digital gauge, uh, whatever the case may be. What you wanna do is go, into, uh, go to a good, known, reputable uh, tire dealer and have them test your gauge against theirs. The cool thing about that, if you don't wanna uh, invest in a, a super expensive one or you just wanna check it against yours, if you know that like yours is one PSI off of the professional one, then you know you can uh, set that accordingly, and then you'll know that you're setting your tires to the optimal uh, pressure to perform for the, the weights and loads and whatnot that you intend to use it. So that's a real quick little tip on gauges uh, on what you prefer. The other thing is the storage of these gauges is gonna be really important. You don't wanna be having these where they're gonna bang around and then uh, cause a problem as well. Also, if you are on one that's digital, the battery condition can be a factor as well. So kind of a lot to think about when it comes to gauges. Gauges. Let me show you real quick that these three gauges will read slightly different. One of these gauges is incorrect. It may surprise you. Let's start with uh, the digital one here. 38. This one we got 39. And we have slightly bumped it a little. And then this one, we've got 39. So believe it or not, of the three that I had here, my really, really old digital one is the one that is not accurate because this one has been checked against uh, a reputable tire uh, res uh, reseller at the racetrack and has been found to be the, the good one. So that means that I'm doing good with these and this one's actually off a little. That's why you check your gauges. But we're just gonna move forward assuming that uh, you have the perfect gauge. And what we wanna do next the valve core itself, uh, we recommend always replacing that with tire changes, but if, if you didn't do that, in the case, honestly, we didn't on this one, we left it alone here, and uh, when you start kind of messing around these, they can tend to be a source of a leak, and all you want to do to figure that out, we already got 40 PSI in this tire, actually, we have about 41 PSI, a little bit over, what you want to do is just take a little bit of soapy water and spray around there, and then see, go ahead and move it a little because something could hit it on the road and you don't want you know, the littlest bit of movement to cause the leak that you don't know about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, set that around there. I also wanna spray down inside and uh, you know, get that soapy water solution. You can see how much soap is in this. And if, if you've got an air leak, it's gonna show it right then and there. So I really, really recommend that. If you've just done the tire change, uh, you should have your core tight, but I thought since I had it in my hand, I'd show you as well. This is a little valve core tool. If you gotta think, you know, over time these can come loose and you could get a little leak there. So all it would take is just, uh, I always recommend loosen up and then give it a little snug to tighten it back up. But you'll know that your valve core is good. That's really important because obviously this is our on off valve 
to hit that proper tire pressure that we want to use. So where do you get the tire pressures? Well, the tires themselves are always going to have, uh, uh, they're going to be embedded with the amount of pressure recommended on that tire. So you can see that it's a cold measurement and that it's at a max pressure for this tire. Now what I recommend you do is back that up against the owner's manual. Let me show you. Another really useful uh, source of information to find out exactly what you should be running for air pressure in your tires is the owner's manual for the exact year, make, and model what you're working on. Special uh, hotter wrench tip here is don't assume all models are going to be the same. You really want to look up the information for your make and model you're working on. But go ahead and find that uh, inside your owner's manual, and you'll see they'll give recommendations for solo rider, rider, and passenger. Consider uh, heavy luggage uh, would be a possible uh, consideration in, in choosing what you're going to do for PSI, but they've got uh, front and rear pressures, measured cold. You can compare those against the tires uh, that you're mounting up. Another source of information might be a sticker that you find still fixed on the motorcycle, like on a fender, or on a piece of bodywork, or something that tells what the recommended pressures are that you can compare against the tire and weights and loads as you choose to fill those up. All right, friends, there's another tech tip video from the How to Wrench YouTube channel. If you haven't done so yet, head over to that channel, hit that subscribe button. There are hundreds of videos for both the do-it-yourselfer and the professional of how to take care, maintain, and service these motorcycles. Make it a great day, and as always, keep wrenching.